This is a highlight from the Speaking Our Peace podcast. I'm Andy Luck. In this highlight, we'll hear Julie Christensen, a retired professor from George Mason University, talk about how we need to be creative when looking for ways to promote peace and nonviolence, especially when conflicts seem to be everywhere we look. But how do you actually talk to people when they're just so bombarded by the amount of violence that they see on a day-to-day basis? How do you talk about peace and violence and, you know, balance that with with conflict resolution? Let me just say, I mean, Iraq is going to answer that better than I can, but I just want to add a few things here. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, one of my friends and colleagues, Susan Allen, is in, in ICAR now, is in the or SCAR, whatever, the school, and she's working, she's been working in the Caucasus and conflict with the uh, First, the Georgians and the uh, and Abkhaz and then Ossetians, and uh, I've seen her bring people together um, in a lot of these talks. They usually have to take them out of the country, away from there, you know, in a new setting. Um, the other thing that's really problematic here is is that Russia is playing such a huge role in this whole thing, and if you don't have Russia at the table. I mean, you can have the Georgians and the Abkhaz or the Georgians and the Ossetians talk as much as you want, but if you have somebody, you know, kind of seeding conflict from outside, it really is complicated. You know, I was just thinking about Gandhi in a way, and that, you know, it was a nonviolent um, movement on his part, but it was a liber it was a liberation movement. It was a fairly national liberation movement. Now, on the other hand, there were different peoples, you know, so it wasn't just one one nation. I mean, it wasn't one nationality, right? But <clears throat> that's easier, I think. Here, it's very complicated because you've got these various peoples. You look at Nagorno-Karabakh, where both sides, Azerbaijan and Armenia, both claim this as, you know, their old ancient territory, the same way as you have in the Middle East, you know, with Israel and Palestinians. And and then you have other big powers, which we're now we're very worried about, Turkey, Russia, you know, um, involved in this. And then you have the United States and France backing off, you know, and how how are people going to talk to each other? I think one of the things about uh, the school at George Mason I like is, is that people are trying and writing books and trying to talk about what might work and how you could organize it. And and what kinds of questions do you ask and how much can you push people or you know we used to talk a lot about having children's camps if you have children from various you know groups that are at, at war but if the children can grow up together with each other without their parents you know maybe we could do something with that so i think we have to think creatively you know because our our goal is peace we don't want anybody fighting we want to stop the fighting but on the other hand when you do that, there are other people who may take great advantage of the peaceful people, right? Thanks for listening. If you're interested in hearing the full episode with Julie and Iwarkli Kakabatse on their work in the South Caucasus, please look for Speaking Our Peace wherever you pick up your podcast, or from our website, speakingourpeace.com. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at speakingourpeace at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Our Peace Podcast. See you next time.